I'm Professor Stephen Chung, and in this episode, we'll take a look at a problem that many astronauts can face when they go up into space. Being an astronaut up in space is truly an out-of-this-world experience, but it's not all fun and games. One problem that many astronauts have in the first few days on the space station is that they can get very nauseated from space motion sickness to the point where no really critical tasks like spacewalks are scheduled for the first three days or so. Space motion sickness is also a real challenge because we can't seem to predict who will suffer from it based on who gets seasick or motion sickness here on Earth because the causes seem to be quite different. So what causes space motion sickness? One main cause seems to be a conflict between our senses notably what our eyes are telling us and what all the other sensors in our body are telling us. If we tilt our head upwards, our eyes sees that we're doing it. However, because we are weightless in space, the sensors in the semicircular canals in our inner ears does not sense that rotation and instead tells our brain that we are not actually tilting our heads. Also, when we move, our eyes tells our brains that we're moving. However, the otolith organs in our inner ears, sensors within a soft gelatin-like material that sends motion signals to the brain when they move, are not nearly as active because we are weightless, and so they tell the brain that we're not moving. On Earth, we are used to having our feet on the ground, and touch sensors in our feet and all over our body tells our brain how we are standing or sitting. Of course, we are floating in space and our feet are not touching the ground most of the time, so that is a new sensation that our brain isn't used to. Finally, because of gravity, we are used to being upright on Earth, but when we are weightless, there is no real up or down, and our eyes and brains are really not used to that. Fortunately, the brain adapts quite quickly to this new and strange environment. It does so by relying on our vision a lot more, while tuning down its reliance on the other sensors that we have discussed. In worst cases, drugs can decrease the sensation of nausea while the brain adapts. I hope that you have enjoyed this peek into the fascinating world of environmental physiology. I'm Stephen Chung, and I'm a professor at Brock University in Canada. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel and check out our other short science episodes. If you want more detailed environmental physiology seminars, please check out our virtual environmental ergonomics series. Thanks for watching and see you next time.